Hey, you are on Mad Dogs After After Show, which we'll refer to as the After After Show, with Cole. Brainstorm me now, Farrell. Mustaches are just visors for your lips. Suppose I decided to fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could, and that's just what I'm doing. so grateful for such a great introduction thank you for those inspiring words mr evil knievel one of my childhood heroes just flying through the air living in the sunlight and enjoying life man we need to all take a little time and live in the sunlight and enjoy life absolutely and uh not a lot of sunlight here today uh but there is a lot of rain, and because of that, our first responders are working absolutely overtime here in Southern California. So we'd just like to take a moment to thank all of our first responders, along with all of our military veterans, all of our active duty personnel, all of our KIA, all of our MIA, all of our POWs, literally could not do the show without those brave Americans letting us do it. Yeah, absolutely. Great respect here on the after after show for them. Um, and thank you so much also to our great partners, kicker performance audio for all your 12 volt needs, only the best for mad dog and Cole. That's why we only use kicker performance audio, find them online kicker.com or on Instagram at kicker audio every other Tuesday night live on YouTube and Facebook kicker unmasked live show. Uh, it's seven. I believe it's at 7 PM central. Sounds Check right. Check them out. Of course, bomber. eyewear, bomber safety. eyewear, and bomber floating. eyewear. they're all one, but we got to break it out because they have so many varieties to choose from for eyewear um whether you want a pair of white frame boogie bombs with a dark smoke safety lens that's polarized like i'm wearing right now or you want the super fashionable aviator style with gold frames and blue ice lenses polarized safety lens non-safety lens polarized non-polarized check them out BomberEyewear.com, over 40 different frame styles, and I don't even know how many lenses and variations to go in them. Plus, they do prescription. I've got a couple of pair myself. Hit them up, Instagram, at Bomber Eyewear, or online, BomberEyewear.com. Of course, our man Cole at the Premix Podcast, sharing his passion for all things desert racing through the lens of a camera and also sidelining out there as an MC for your off-road event or your motorsports event or your kid's birthday. Man, slide into his DMs on Instagram, the at symbol T-H-E-P-R-E-M-I-X-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's the Premix Podcast. Hit him up. Of course, our YouTube, and there'll be a lot of work coming to that, and we'll highlight that in a minute. From uh, Kelsey Morrell Film, getting all our stuff produced and, and up on our YouTube channel. You can find us at Mad Dog Media. And uh, you find her on Instagram at Kelsey Morrell Film for all your media needs you got marketing needs you need a website built you need a social media campaign 
or a social media influencer campaign. Yell, hey, Keeks. She also does all our templates for social media, and uh, she'll be busy here real quick, too. <laughs> um, so find her online, heykeeks.com, or on Instagram, at heykeeksmarketing. So, dude, here Bye. we are. Version loyal two. listeners, thank you. Stay loyal. Hang in there. We'll explain. Yeah. So you'll notice the uh, intro was a little different. Um, unfortunately, the a long beep, 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 beep show uh, podcast has was trademarked by another company um, that is a in Scottsdale. <laughs> so you can imagine what I just said. And, you know, I'm sorry I infringed on their trademark. Um, a phone call would have been nice. Bastards didn't have to send me a cease and desist. But we got it handled. It's amiable, amiably worked out. And you are now along with the after after show. Woo. Yeah. Better, it, faster, stronger, sleeker. Of course, you know, um, it will be Mad Dog's after after show on the titles. Uh, but we're going to call it Cole's favorite after after show. <laughs> and that's AFTR. And uh, if you know, you know. Yep. If you've been along with this journey this far, you'll know <laughs> the point of the after after show. And so now the after after show is the show. So it's all come around. Took about a year and a half, but we're 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 back. We're we're better. We're funnier. Our guests are going to bring the heat. And uh, I'm going to overpromise and underdeliver. Here we go. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Bring it. So with that, um, that uh, company that owns the trademark for along for the ride, I do apologize. I had no idea. We did do our due diligence. Um, I just had no idea that you were in the process of getting a trademark. Otherwise, we'd have called it after show to begin with so would have saved a lot of people a lot of time and a lot of heartache and actually a lot of paperwork yeah and them a lot of money but yep. on that side i do apologize i had absolutely zero intention of infringing upon your trademark um and we have amiably come to a good decision and uh folks thanks for being after with us Thanks for hanging on to the after show. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Going to be great. It's going to be better. It's 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 uh it's a it's a new exciting time. It's it's a new version. It's it's a new us really. Yeah, absolutely. The same old stupid stuff but just with a different logo and I, and I think that's really great. Yeah. Preach. Preach. Um that being said, man, speaking of the same old stupid stuff, you know, um I've been doing some traveling. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm currently in a full on uh, kicker build on a side by side vehicle. On a show vehicle. <laughs> on a show vehicle for a well known, well, well known person. Um, and we'll leave it at that. Hopefully, um, the first of the year. I will announce it. I have a due date prior to the first of the year, but I anticipate us recording next week and I don't think I'll be quite finished yet. <laughs> so, but watch your Instagram and Facebook because there will be an announcement right around the first of the year um, on what's going on with that particular person's particular vehicle that will be fully kickered out and he will be living loud or she oh yeah thanks Woo. 
Almost, almost blew that. <laughs> Ooh, beauty, eh? Uh, so anyways, yeah. Um, but prior to that, I've been traveling a little bit. Um, <clears throat> made a, made a heck of a road trip up to Boise. Of course, it's, uh, 2024 kicker AMA arena cross championships, uh, started December 2nd weekend in Boise, Idaho with rounds one and two, a good old fashioned double header. Um, gotta say other than being in Boise, it being cold, it snowing one night and being windy as heck the next day and cold. Um, it was a great time. Great to be back with the arena cross family. Uh, the racing was good. Um, track was, was good. Uh, have never been to the arena there in Boise. So, you know, it was interesting, a great setup. Everything went okay there. And, um, you know, on night one, uh, they run, they run the unique format where they run, uh, qualifying for gate positions for the heat races. They run four pro heat races, four groups of heat races. Um, two people from each heat race transfer. Then they run semis, pro semis, and two people, wait, does that make 10, 12, 14? No, one person from each semi transfers, and then one person from each LCQ transfers. Nailed it. Thank you. Whew. <laughs> Stumbled. Um, but, you know, and then uh, when they get to the mains, of course, it's uh, the top fast time gets his gate pick first, and then everybody from there. Um, and when they get to main two, they completely invert the finish of main one. Um, first opportunity to see all the all the guys that we know and love, Kyle Bitterman, Kyle Peters, um, Isaiah Clark. Uh, notably Isaiah Clark has, uh, been signed on by the lasting impressions concrete team, uh, which is the Kyle Bitterman's team also. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good. It was good to see Isaiah. He's a young up and comer. He's quick at times. Um, and I think he'll get there really well. Um, and man, KB and KP. I think the first night KB Kyle Bitterman put down the hot lap. Um, and I think Kyle Peters was in about third. There was a newcomer on a Yamaha, um, named Ryan Brees. Oh yeah. Super cross and, guy. Yeah. Super cross guy came in very racy. Matter of fact, I think he ended up with the fast time for the night. Um, and he really did, uh, put up a challenge. Um, Kyle Bitterman, first main, first night. Bitterman got the whole shot in the first moto um, and managed to hold the lead and hold KP off. Uh, and I, I don't know what happened to Brees. If I remember right, he, he overshot. The track had a really long, full length, start straight into a very sharp left-hander. And, uh, I think he overcooked that corner and ended up in the airbag in that corner. Oh, good. If well, I remember right. Good so, thing the airbag was there. Yeah. Welcome to kicker arena cross, son. <laughs> um, but I don't know that for a fact. I don't remember for sure, but, uh, yeah, man, it was, it was outstanding. What a, we were set up. The kicker booth was loud and proud living loud. Uh, right up on the mezzanine, had a local dealer there. Um, so, you know, I, sound hounds out of, uh, out of, uh, Caldwell, Idaho. And there, um, actually the Friday day one race day was their 28th anniversary in business. So congratulations, oh. sound hounds. Um, really nice getting to hang out with you guys, getting to meet you guys. 
Uh, he did a great job and I appreciate the support. And uh, we were right out there on the mezzanine. So we got to see a bunch of the racing also. Um, it was good. It was racy. Main one, Kyle Peters won, um, which I wasn't sure he was going to. Main two, Kyle Peters won, which I was pretty sure he was going to because with the fast three starting in the very back of the field, um, KP's just got away, you know, when, when he's in traffic, um, he's just an alien brain, dude. He's Total crafty. alien brain. Yeah. He's and almost he's, like, you know, with size wise, he's almost like a MotoGP guy. So he knows how to, he knows how to pick a lane. That's not there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll get on to that with round three. Um, so second night, um, Man, good racing again. Brees posted fast time that night. Uh, I know uh, better men got out and led um, again. KP led, Brees led, and KP won. So, um, you know, there again, uh, they, I believe that night, um, just to break it down, uh, KP was in the lead and um there was a uh a, a crash and they ended up as kp the the lights came on they went yellow and then red and as kp backed out they were coming right to the finish and breeze passed him um and they went back to scoring and timing and the visual. And when the lights went red, KP was in the lead and they ended up calling the race. They were past halfway. Wow. Um, they had a medical situation that had to be dealt with, uh, you know, and um, it was, that was our good, uh, our good buddy from Reno. Yeah, he just had a, um, a momentary uh, lapse of consciousness after getting off the track. Um, and in, in the, you know, in the in leaning towards being con more about the safety, they got the medical team in there and and uh, got him strapped down just to make sure there was nothing weird happening. So, um ended up fine um and uh made the trip to madison which was great um but uh because of the stoppage of the race um and where they were when the red light came on um it was uh quite controversial was it that yeah, yeah. They, uh, now, KP was in the lead when the red light came on, um, but there was a lot of um, a lot of accusations. A lot of keyboard warriors calling the race from a different perspective, I guess, um, and know that that all of us at Kicker AMA Pro Arena Cross Championships first and foremost about safety and the rider's safety. And so all you armchair quarterbacks can stuff it. Um, you know, it, when, when we, these guys are our friends, they're our brothers and they are great athletes. And when they're down, the right thing needs to be done. And they did that and they made the right call. I supported a hundred percent. So yeah. And they AMA, they don't, they don't want an accident to happen, right? So the fact that they took the high road, took the safe route, that's not because they wanted KP to win, and that was the easiest way to do it, all right? This is not the NFL. It's not scripted. It's all about safety. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's just, I mean, dude, it's, it's you know, one of those things where uh, it's – you know, you got to be safe. Yeah. And if you were the guy on the ground, you better believe that you would want them to red flag the race for your safety. A hundred percent. And I don't 100%. think a lot of people think that way. No, no. Uh, 
I agree a thousand percent. And a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people are armchair quarterbacks and they want to call it, um, you know, so, but um, it's, you can only do so much, you know? I concur. So, uh, on a special mention from from Friday night, uh, the Kicker AMA Pro Arena Cross Championship Series has added a class for the live, um, for Pro Night, the live TV night, live on MAV TV, uh, Friday nights, and it's called the A be all star okay which is basically exactly what it is it's a and b riders um they bring them all together in one class and run them together and they run qualifying just like the pros they run heat races during the day and they run the main event at night hey that's fun during the show and and lot it's it's a lot of young guys, up and comers, you know, 14, 15, 16. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my little buddy, Ben Thompson, who's um, now probably every bit as tall as I am. <laughs> I've been watching him for five or six years and, and uh, he's been, uh, he's been bugging me and bugging me and, We've become good friends, um, and he had uh, years ago. He asked me he wanted a, a kicker bullfrog, and I said, "When you win your first big main, I'll give you a kicker bullfrog." That was five years ago. Um, so Friday night, the kid pulled out the W. Nice, yeah. In the in the. Uh, AB All Star Race, which was not a runaway, he worked for it. Um, did a great job, kept it together, um, and I made good on my promise. And nice. <laughs> I wish I'd have had a video of the look on his face because he couldn't believe it. You know, he did he remember so, the deal? He was like, oh, "I never thought I'd get this." You know, <laughs> so it was really cool. Yeah, what a good um, night for him. Yeah, yeah, and then Saturday night, uh, hey, Mr. Producer, Statman, Hi. do you have that name that slipped me already? Um, Aaron Seminoy. Yeah, gosh, dang it. Semino. Yeah, it was Aaron Semino. I, I apologize, Aaron, if you're listening. It just slipped my mind, and I could not get my head together. You're still Reno's finest, though, all right? Yeah, absolutely. You and, you and uh, Conway. Both out of Reno, um, both great dudes. Really, really grateful to know you guys. So, and I'm really super happy that Semino's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, little Benny uh, won that race, and he actually led uh, a bunch of laps on Saturday night. And then the front end got crossed up on him. Go, it got, uh, I don't know if he cross rutted or oh, no. hit a soft spot in the corner, but just kind of fold front end up and he went down, lost a couple of spots. Um, so, you know, is what it is, um, man. And then, you know, pack it up, get ready for the next one. Jump in the, I took the, uh, Volvo because of the snow. Um, and, uh, man, just hauled ass. It's about a day, a little over a one day drive for me, um, down through the middle of nowhere. Um, I did manage to test the electronic speed limiter on the Slovo. <laughs> um, and, what's it set uh, at? Uh, exactly 117, although I think think i could have got 118 but um it was it was it had tons of rpm to go but it just wasn't going so you pay for all the speed why don't the manufacturers give you all the speed yeah dirty dogs so i managed to get home monday um you know kind of take care of business wash the laundry and uh and uh say hi to the striking viking and 
man, Wednesday morning, boom, on a flight out of Vegas, uh, flew to good old Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, as Alice Cooper would say. Um, yeah. And, uh, made the run to Madison, Wisconsin to veterans Memorial Coliseum at the Allegiant center facility. Um, really nice older arena very well kept uh they built a monster monster track it was small um but the whoops dude holy cow i don't know if you saw those but on you they'd be like waist deep i was thinking like at my head yeah they were they were deep and uh what was crazy was you know uh so they ran pro night Friday night for the kicker AMA pro arena cross championships. And then they ran a pro am race Saturday, which counts in the AMA amateur points, oh. but they run a pro class also. So a lot of the pros that don't, um, you know, maybe don't, podium every weekend or don't top five or six or seven or eight stay to try and get a little more travel money Um, that's that's actually really cool yeah it's i think it's a great idea i think it's a good program um and uh you know plus you get to see some amateurs on saturday pro night was was crazy and uh you know, it was it. Uh, Ryan Brees showed up there, even though he only had a. Uh, he was only going to do the Boise race. Um, one of the Blue Crew's riders got hurt oh. uh, in a bad crash in Boise, and uh, so they had Brees go to Madison, Wisconsin, fill in for him, and uh, he rode good. He rode good. He's very sporty. It was a one race deal now that, uh, you know, we've gone to the winter break. So it's unknown yet. If we'll see him in Loveland, Colorado, uh, first weekend of the new year, but, um, I guess we'll know when we get there. Good racing. Um, uh, I think Kyle Peters laid down the hot lap, uh, might've been breeze. And then Kyle Bitterman laid down second hot lap. But when they got out um, in the heat races, the whoops were so big that there was no pros blitzing them. That's that's insane because the arena cross guys are so damn good at whoops. So if they're not yeah. blitzing them, that's, uh, that means a lot. But I don't hate it because arena cross, you can only do so much. So if you can do something to slow down the riders, get a little longer lap times, and shake things up safely. I'm all for it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know the heat, the way the heats all broke up. Um, Kyle Peters, Kyle Bitterman were in separate heats, um, and Kyle Peters did not get a good start in that heat race. And uh, by the end of the whoops, which he blitzed, which was the first time I'd seen anyone blitz the whoops all day um by the end of the whoops kyle peters was in the lead and walked away handily with it going uh i think he was doing a two two three like two 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 three or something like that on the whoops just kind of bunny hopping through them um kyle bitterman came out in his heat race and dude bam just just blitz the whoops and Bitterman has been doing work because he was blitzing the whoops in Boise um, before anybody was. And he was easily at least a tenth of a second faster through the whoops than anybody, including Kyle Peters in Boise. Um, so it was shaping up to be a good night. Um, you know, great racing, good action. Uh, ben, little Ben Thompson. Uh, Got out there uh, out front in the AB and then slipped back a couple of spots. Um, Did you take the bullfrog back? No, I didn't. 
he actually ended up winning Saturday night. So oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a very emotional interview for him. Um, very, very emotional. And they, Good. that's not live on TV, but they are live streaming the pro am day. So, um, and I believe you can find the link for that. Uh, go to Instagram at arena cross USA and click their link. Anyways. Um, Ma'am, main two, Kyle, Kyle Peters uh, and Kyle Bitterman battled for quite a while. Uh, main one, I don't know what happened to Brees. Um, and, uh, oh, Brees went down, finished oh, dead he? last. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, main two comes up. Of course, Brees has the gate pick, has the, the, the pole. It was all planned. And, yeah. And Bitterman. And Peters are in the back of the pack, you know, inverted start. And they pulled the trigger and, and, uh, Peters didn't get a great start. Betterman worked his way through the pack. I think a little faster than Peters did. And they ran two, three for quite a while. And then, uh, um, Betterman, Betterman's bike started laying down in the whoops. Um, you could hear it just off a touch hmm. and I thought maybe he was, you know, backing out or something, but I talked to his bike chief, Ashley, uh, and he said, nah, bike was laying down a little bit and they're trying to figure it out. So, That's strange. um, yeah, weird, like ECU issue or something like that. Um, it's just laying down top end, but that left KP way back, like, like a full straight stretch behind Brees Ooh. and he was way back. He was making up time. I was watching the lap times. Um, he was making up a little bit of time. Uh, and then the crossed flags came out for halfway and he started making up more time. And, uh, at one point there was two laps where he made up four tenths of a second and 0.496 of a second in two laps. Woof. Um, yeah. And so he started chasing him down and uh, literally caught up to him. And I think Brees was riding just about as wide as he could ride, trying to take everything he could. Um, last lap, through the whoops, Brees made a mistake. Peters got up passed him Brees passed him back uh oh no i'm sorry um that was the night before um so in the whoops Brees made a mistake going into the whoops and by the end of the whoops peters was right behind him but they both got equally good pull equally good launch um, through the rhythm section. However, they were coming, it was a white flag lap. They were coming up on back markers and Peter saw a hole on the inside that nobody else saw, including the, you know, 4,000 people in the stands. Nobody saw it. Um, and he anchored the brakes and pitched the back end around. And I don't know what the margin of victory was, but I can tell you, I don't know time wise, but it was about three quarters of a front wheel. Yeah, and that that video went viral uh, that weekend. Oh yeah, I mean, all the Supercross guys were talking about it. They were talking about it on Pulp and Max, and and you know, Arena Cross doesn't get quite the eyeballs that Supercross and Motocross does. So, but everybody right. knows Kyle Peters, and that video just went crazy. I mean, the bike control that he had, and I just, uh, I just have to applaud him so much that he was so strategic that he was basically on the outside, locked up the rear brake and dove completely under, not using the berm completely on the flat side of the corner. And I don't even think he had enough momentum to make the finish jump. I think he just rolled it over the scoring line uh, and, and, and made the first place work. That was, that was some beautiful race craft. Yeah, it was amazing. And really there was two back markers and Brees that he passed. So he went down <laughs> on the inside where there wasn't a line uh, inside three guys. Uh, so crazy. 
And, you know, to be fair, the back markers didn't hold them up. No. You know, Brees was in the line that, that him and Peters had been taken the whole race. So, um, uh, you know, uh, that's what I, I, I think I commented on that on the on the arena cross Instagram post about it, uh, the video. And I was like, just all I sent was like Kyle Peters with the alien emoji and a brain emoji. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That was just a big brain move. Big, big um, brain time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, I saw, you know, his dad, Kevin has become a real close friend of mine. And I saw on the video, Kevin's reaction. Cause of course I didn't get to see, you know, I'm not down in the pits and that just did my heart good, man. So, so, uh, so far, yeah. KP has been, uh, basically undefeated in the mains. Um, but it hasn't been easy. Yeah, not It'll runaways. Int- yeah, not at all. And he hasn't been. Uh, I'm not even sure if he's been the fastest qualifier yet in three rounds. So, um, and then the pro am show was a good show. Um, you know, there was a lot of action, a lot of racing. Um, Brees actually stuck around, I think, just to pad his pocket. And of course, um, you know, did a great job of taking home the win. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, in the uh, AB All Star on the Pro Am night, old uh, good little uh, Benny the Jet Thompson. Took home another win, like I said, very emotional uh, interview, and and uh, he was it was just crazy because uh, you know his mom was up there with me, we were standing there watching, and actually she was watching the end of the end of the pro main Friday night with me, and uh, a couple laps after the middle of the race, I elbowed her and I made the you know fishing sign like. Peters is reeling him. She goes, yep. <laughs> and so oh, how funny it was. It's kind of cool, you know, and she's, she's an amazing person. Um, and, uh, I'm very blessed to know them also. So yeah, dude, it was with that man packed up Saturday night and, uh, my good buddy, Chad and his beautiful yeah. wife, Denise came down from Rhinelander, Wisconsin to spend the weekend stayed at the same hotel came to the races both nights it was awesome to see him uh got to sit down and have some breakfast with him uh saturday morning and uh yeah it was just super super cool to see them discovered a rad little donut shop in madison wisconsin called lane's donuts Ooh. and uh other than that man um you know, here we go onward and upward to, to the 2024 season. It's here. Uh, yeah. It started, it's going and there's drama. <laughs> so good drama though. In a good way. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Akon, I want to give you a special shout out. He rides in the pro class, super rad guy, Aaron Conley. Um, just, just really cool. Um, He's out of Reno also. And uh, anyway, that's that. Um, you got anything exciting been going? Man, lately, no. It's, you know, unfortunately, I missed that that last round of, of Jake's District 38 racing. So, well, I, I shouldn't say, yeah, fortunately, unfortunately, I didn't miss it. If you yeah, know, if you can read about between it, the lines. We you haven't know, covered that other than I don't want to talk about it. So now's the time. Man, I mean, this is uh, so the the series started with Jake leading the first round and the clutch detonating and getting a drop score. Dude fought all year, fought hard, had a lot of great success, Uh, was rolling up to sign up at this last race and the bike blew up. What? Bike blew up going to sign up 
And that oh was, no! And that was that. Oh man, I didn't realize that. Yeah, what so, a bummer. Yeah. I know he was. He was. You guys were uh, right on the tip of the championship points too, were you not? Uh, it was very close. Um, yeah. yeah, I and I, I can't act like I feel bad for myself. I mean, I just feel absolutely horrible for Jake, and I really haven't even talked to him one on one a whole lot about about it. I mean, we're a couple or about a week past now, and I don't know how how much of this. Uh, of this uh, uh, dirty laundry I want to bring up, but I just feel absolutely gutted for him. And I mentioned this not because, not because of the story of it, but a lot of times I've mentioned that he's on an older bike than these young kids that are out there. And, and that poor bike has been through a lot this year. Um, it even got a new top end right before the 24 hour and then basically raced 23 of the 24 hours on that motorcycle and then had two more rounds to go. And, 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 uh, it, it just, it just said, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's, you know, that's, that's all part of amateur budget racing is if you could have a new bike or two bikes every year is actually the way you should race desert is you, is you really almost need two bikes, but, but to do it, on a, on a very old platform and, and, and on a, on a moderate budget, it's just the reality of it. And it's sad that it's sad that he didn't go out because of something that had to do with his talent or his preparation or his fitness or his passion. It was just mechanical things break and it broke. Yep. Yep. Uh, young Jake young. I am sorry, but was, you know, rest in this, you were up there, you're on an old bike. Um, you know, and it's your first year chasing the points and to be your first year chasing the points and be up there. And I'm guessing probably finish somewhere around second, uh, top three for sure. Yeah. So to be on the, on the AMA podium, um, for a championship, uh, you know, is no small task. And to recover from the issues that you had earlier in the year, um, you know, and your tenacity to stay with it, Jake, uh, man, great job. I hope you go out next year and smear them all over the place. Uh, you got a great crew chief behind you and, uh, you guys, you know, that's, that's unfortunately, you know, if, if, if winning was easy, we'd all have trophies, you know, and it wouldn't mean anything. Right. Right. And, uh, I'll tell you that when you pull that championship in next year, hold that trophy high. Cause it's going to mean an awful lot for the swing and a miss this year. So, you know, stuff happens. Um, but you guys did a hell of a job this year and put up a good solid record. Um, uh, and the tenacity to keep going, keep fighting and be there in the hunt the whole way. I'm just really impressed. Good job. And I, I got to give Jake credit too. Thank you for those kind words, Lauren. Uh, you know, the age of the age that he is, he is, uh, he is young for life, but for racing, that's, that's not quite, that's not very young. And, and the point of this story is, Jake had some absolute slams this year. I mean, I saw personally like four of them and he, right. and he had probably, I mean, six good slams. I mean, and the poor guy, I mean, it got to the point where it almost felt like he had to buy a set of bars, a throttle tube, hand guards for every round because those were just <laughs> going to get thrown away at the end of the day. So the fact that, that he crashed, got up, had good results, put the bike back together, rinse, repeat, flying W, you know, wipe the dust off him, keep charging hard, and then went to work on Monday. Uh, yeah, you're a badass, dude. Yeah, for sure. And and great job, crew chief. I mean, getting that stuff handled and keeping an eye on things, keeping him up, keeping the pits rolling. Um, you know, you certainly, sh neither one of you should let this 2023 season go by with your shoulders down because um, you've both come leaps and bounds on, on uh, this year, you know, and working as a team. And when you think about 
back in January when we recorded whenever the first race was. Yeah. And, you know, your minute 45 might as well have been, (laughs) you know, 10 minute pit stop or whatever. And now you're doing it in 30 seconds, 35 seconds. Yeah. It's gotten a lot faster and it's, and it's, uh, it's been fun. Um, I've, I've said that before on the show, uh, but, uh, you know, I gotta be honest. I, I do it because it's fun too. Um, I'm glad to help and I hope that I do help and I, and, and Jake's very appreciative of whatever help I can bring, but I'm also having a great time and not a lot of places I want to be more on a Saturday or a Sunday than out in the desert, especially after the race is playing in my truck. So yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody wins. <laughs> Understand that completely. So nice. Well, you know, it, it's been a hell of a season for sure for you guys and, yeah, You've had your ups and downs and you guys have handled it with class and grace. And, you know, even, even with the bike blowing up on the line, uh, man, the way you guys are handling it, definitely class grace and, and push towards next year. Cause, uh, you know, good chance next year's a year, man. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and trying to figure out right now, exactly what he wants to do and uh it's it's his money it's his dedication it's it's everything rides on his shoulders so so kind of kind of in the mode right now trying to figure out um if we want to switch districts uh you know i don't want to speak for jake but there's some other opportunities to go do some other things in off-road racing so so we'll see either either way we're going to be we're going to be racing next year um and it's funny because I feel blessed that he asked me what I want to do. And the reality is it doesn't matter what I want to do. If you want to go race flat track, if you want to go race RC cars, if you want to whatever, yeah. go fly super cubs, like let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm down for whatever. So I love that. Make, I'm making that public go race what you want to race and, and I'll, I'll be there. So and Cole will be there. You know what? You get cars and stuff. I know you got a lot of experience there and, and, uh, You've always got uh, the old mad dog in your back pocket too. Absolutely. <laughs> May have a couple of secrets that I know that you don't. Um, <laughs> hey, the well, last one, the last one worked, didn't it? It did. It sure did. <laughs> so, Hey man. Um, yeah. What a, what a hell of a day. Um, yeah. Interesting day. <laughs> want to kick back real quick to episode 65 and thank Mitch Guthrie Jr. for being on. want to thank all our guests that have been on this year. As we're pushing towards the end of the year, we are going to recap that next week. Um, but this week, it's Christmas. So I want to be sure and tell every listener, I wish I knew you all by name, but Dr. and Crazy Watson, Rob McDonald, uh, a lot of our, you know, diehard listeners. I went to BC, BC Vought, Kang. Um, <laughs> I want to thank all you guys for listening. Thanks for sticking with us. Spread the word. I am super grateful. Um, for each and every one of you that, that listens to the podcast, um, and, uh, you know, it's just, man, I'm so grateful for everybody. Cole and I were going through before we started recording, we were going through, uh, our annual stats and, uh, thanks to you folks. Um, I think through all the venues we're averaging, uh, about a 4.9 review rating through all of our, uh, streaming services. So thank you for giving us likes. Thank you for, for acting on Cole's severe instructions that come across (laughs) so smoothly. Um, no, thank you. Please, please continue to do so. Continue to listen. Bear with us as we go through this little uh, name change thing. Um, But also dwell on the fact that you're part of a very special alumni, whether you got to be on the show when it was normally uh, formally known as something else, or you've been there since the beginning. 
Uh, now, now you can bring along all the new fans on Mad Dogs After After Show. Uh, only good things can come with this. Yeah, absolutely. And and I want to thank you all for sticking with us. And you know, um, again, and man, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Um, God bless you all. God bless our troops. Everybody say a prayer for our troops and be thankful for the service people that are overseas that can't be home with their families at Christmas. If you get a chance, make a little donation to help them out. Send them some food, whatever, you know, just reach out. I mean, we shouldn't need a special season to be nice to people. So take time to be nice to people, especially at this time of year when so many people are assholes. Um, don't be one. Nope. You yeah, know, just don't knock it off. Yeah. And uh, man, just embrace the spirit of Christmas. Sit down with your family. If you get the chance to be around them on Christmas, read the Christmas story. Um, be grateful. Be thankful. Cole, what you got? You know, if you want to be around friends and family, I hope you get to do that. If you want to be out in the desert, I hope you get to go do that. Uh, it's such a special time. Uh, it's a very nice time to 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 reflect and and kind of kind of reshift your priorities. And as Lauren said, just just to be generally nicer to people. Um, and you know what? I've I've uh, been known as a Grinch in the past, but but you know what? Hallmark movies they're not that bad. Um, <laughs> and and the wife's like them. So if they want to watch them. Just, just watch them with them. You know, what's it going to hurt? You can yeah. already figure out the plot in the first two minutes and just write it out. It'll be okay. Make some, make some popcorn, you know. Yeah. Write it out. Enjoy it. So, yeah. Well, I guess with that, thank you all for being on Mad Dogs after AFTR show. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho. Oh, <laughs> Mad Dog out. <laughs> <laughs>